Hi, today we're going to talk about how to get the best out of your overdrive pedal, any overdrive pedal. And by this, I'm talking about overdrives, distortions, fuzzes, even treble boosters, anything that adds some distortion to your sound. Any of these, just how to think about them and get the best out of them. Um, and I'm doing this because although there are quite a few videos on this topic on YouTube, nobody yet that I've seen has explained them quite the way that I think about it and I'm hoping that you'll find my point of view useful. So the real distinction that I want to make is between overdrives that are interactive, that you have to play them into a slightly overdriven or a heavily overdriven amp, and they only really sound good or sound their best in interaction with that driven stage later on in your signal chain. Then the other types of pedals would be more independent pedals where you can run them into a clean amp and they will just sound good all on their own, going straight into a clean amp irrespective of what distortion is going on further down the stage, or at least I should say with no further distortion going on down the stage. Um, if you don't really know how you're using your pedal in this regard, then it can be quite difficult to get a good sound, depending on the pedal you're using, because some pedals just really don't work in an independent way. They need that distortion further down the line. Some pedals are fine independent, and in fact, they are, may have so much gain that if you put more distortion down the line, then they won't sound good, they'll just sound mushy. So I think this independent versus interactive pedals is a really important distinction. And if that's it, if that makes sense to you and you think, fine, I understand that, then go and watch something else. Uh, but if you'd like to hear more about like the real details of how I think about this, then that's what I'm going to talk about now. So I should say that this idea of independent and interactive pedals, this idea really clicked with me when I watched an episode of that pedal show from way back at the beginning of it. It's so old that it is still on Daniel at the Gig Rigs YouTube channel rather than the That Pedal Show channel itself. And so I will link to that below because if you want to hear some really good examples of pedals that work differently depending on what kind of amp they go into, they do it really well on there. They don't use this terminology, interactive and independent pedals, but I think they'd be really useful terms for us to start using as guitarists because I think it would help us make better choices uh, when we are dialing in our overdriven sounds. Okay, so the classic example of an interactive pedal is the famous Ibanez Tube Screamer. Everyone knows about these. Everyone talks about them. Uh, they're probably, you know, the most talked about and recommended overdrive pedals out there but they only really work interactively. If you try and run them into a clean amp, they just sound a bit thin and a bit weedy. So uh, I'm gonna cut in some audio examples that I pre-recorded here. Um, so first things first, I am gonna play you the clean channel of my amp. It's a little Laney VC15 with a Les Paul just going into the low input uh, with the bright switch on because the Les Paul humbuckers are a little bit dark. So here's the clean sound. <laughs> And then here is me putting the Tube Screamer straight into the clean sound. Now hopefully you can hear that it's there's quite a fizzy, harsh top end there and not a lot of body to the actual guitar note. It kind of almost sounds like the top of the uh, sound, that fizziness, is disconnected from the rest of it, and it leads to a kind of an unpleasant overdrive. The alternative is if you set your amp for a kind of a, what they call an edge of breakup tone. Now, if you don't know what that is, there are probably a million YouTube videos out there about it. Loads of people go on about like, oh, I must have an edge of breakup tone, which I don't necessarily believe in but it's a really popular way of playing guitar. So I'm not gonna go into too much of that. All it means is that you have your drive set up so that there's just a bit of overdrive when you dig into your strings, but if you pick them softly, it's a bit cleaner. So I'll try and demonstrate that sound that I've got on my amp here. <laughs> And 
And now here is the Tube Screamer going into that edge of breakup sound. I have left the controls exactly the same as they were on the clean channel. Here's how it sounds. <laughs> So hopefully you can hear that the slightly driven sound has allowed the Tube Screamer, when it comes in, it's kind of bloomed and the Tube Screamer has made the mid-range much more present and the whole sound just sounds nice and in your face and strong and it's that classic Tube Screamer sound that everyone goes on about. And it's also kind of tamed some of that harsh high end. At least it's still there, you can still hear it if you listen for it, but it's in balance with the rest of the sound that's going on. And it's just a great overdrive sound, but you can only really get it when you're going into that slightly driven edge of breakup tone on your amp. I could have tried other things. I could have tried more drive on the Tube Screamer going into the clean channel, but that just would have made it busier. So that wouldn't have worked. I could have tried rolling off some of the tone control to get rid of that fizz, but actually it doesn't really get rid of much of the fizz. It just makes that body of the guitar sound even thinner. There's not really anything you can do with the clean sound to really make it much nicer than we already heard. So that's an interactive pedal. The other way you could do it is you could set your amp clean like we had, and then you could pick a pedal that is designed to work kind of straight into a clean sound, or at least something like the JHS Angry Charlie, this is the Andy Timmons version, um, something that's designed to, to emulate, emulate an amp in its own right. So these pedals, uh, I've got another one here, the Amp Tweaker Big Rock, these nowadays tend to be called amp in a box pedals because they emulate a famous amplifier and the idea is you can kind of have a clean amp in front of them, just switch the pedal on and you get the sound of that famous amplifier. I don't think amp in a box is a good enough term to replace independent overdrive pedal because there are classic pedals from before the term amp in a box was ever used that work independently. You know, when I was starting out, I loved the Boss SD1. I think that's still a great overdrive that can go into a clean amp and give you a good overdriven sound. For a beginner, you can pick up a Boss SD1 for £20 on eBay, and you've got a good overdrive that can go straight into a clean amp. The Boss Blues driver does the same thing, uh, can go into a clean amp, no problem. So here is an example of what the Angry Charlie sounds like going into the clean channel. <laughs> Now you can hear on this that there's still still quite a bit of top end fizz, partly because it's a high gain amp emulation. It, it's aiming to be like a, a JCM 800, which was a Marshall, had a lot of overdrive, was quite heavy and quite distorted. So there is still some top end fizz that's still there, but it's usable as a sound in its own right. Here it is going into the drive channel. <laughs> What you can hear there uh, still sounds pretty good actually, but the mid range is starting to get a bit congested because you've got a very distorted sound going into some more distortion, it's starting to get a bit mushy. Now that would be easy to fix actually, I could just back off the gain on the pedal and maybe even give it a bit more treble with some of the controls on there, but you can back off the gain and, and kind of clean that up so you can use independent pedals interactively. They can still work if you're going into a slightly driven app. Doesn't work the other way. You can't really use interactive pedals independently. I suppose I should say here that I'm talking about if you want classic guitar sounds, if you want to sound like Nine Inch Nails or Ministry or crazy kind of white noise stuff, great, um, break all these rules, that's what they're for. But I'm more thinking about if you are playing in a covers band or something, or you're aiming to emulate some classic guitar greats like Stevie Ray Vaughan or ACTC or Jimi Hendrix, stuff like that, you know, conventional guitar sounds. This is how I think about using the overdrives.
So there's an example of an independent pedal. They don't have to be high gain to be independent though. I have a Klon KTR here, which is low gain, similar to the, well, certainly similar to how I'd set up the uh, Tube Screamer there. And here's how that sounds going into the clean channel. And that sounds fine. It doesn't have that top end harshness that the Tube Screamer had going into the clean channel. It almost turns that clean channel into the drive channel that I had going on in my amp. It sounds a bit nicer, to be honest. And then here is the Klon going into the drive channel of the amp. And it still sounds great. I haven't changed any of the settings on these pedals because it's a lower gain pedal there's not too much overdrive even though we've stacked the pedal with the drive stage of the amp so it sounds fine it's a great choice and you don't have to buy a clon pedal to do that you can get a cheaper version you could get a electro harmonic soul food you could get a wampler tumnus uh, which i think is a great um, clon style pedal for less money than an actual clon so let's talk about some of the reasons why you might want to use either of these types of pedal. There will be different people, hopefully watching this, uh, who are different stages in their guitar playing lives about learning about guitar equipment. So some of you, people who haven't been around pedals and guitar equipment all that much, might be thinking, why would I buy a pedal that only works with an overdriven amp? What, what would be the point of that? You know, I want flexibility. I don't want to be detected to how I set up my amp by my pedal. That's a completely valid point of view. Actually, I'm going to talk more later on about how I actually kind of agree with that point of view and I'm a big fan of independent pedals because of that. But for those people who are confused about why interactive pedals are so popular, then let me just explain that that sound of the slightly driven amp, which kind of came from the blues in the early 60s of all those classic guitar sounds that we grew up listening to and the electric guitars kind of emulated ever since, like the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, the Eagles, Leonard Skinner, that kind of thing. They all tended to play with a bit of distortion on their amp. You know, they weren't crystal clean guitarists. And they would then discover that if they could find pedals that would push the amp a bit harder, I mean, I suppose way back then there weren't pedals that could push the amp harder, but as, as the technology started to come along, and the early ones were the treble boosters, which didn't really introduce any extra distortion into the signal, they just boosted the signal, especially the treble part of the signal, harder, which would make the amp work harder, and then that interaction between the treble booster and the amp that was already on the edge of breakup would sound great, would make it sound bigger and more distorted and more lively. And that was the best overdrive they had at the time. And even now, 60 years on, as guitarists, we're often copying those sounds, those classic tones that, that were made back then. So this way of playing is really popular. And you will find people on the internet who say like, oh, I only ever play with an edge of breakup tone. It has to be, has to be that, um, which is wrong. An edge of breakup tone is great. Uh, by all means, experiment with it, play it, know how to use it. It's a wonderful way of playing guitar. But, but, and here's where this gets back relevant to people who already understand edge of breakup tone and are wondering why I'm going on so much about this. I don't want to disappoint anyone, but there are styles of music that are not blues and rock. And sometimes you need a clean amp. And if you've got a pedal board that only has interactive pedals on, and then you are, so coming from a working guitarist's point of view, say you're at a show or at a gig and whoever's in charge of the band or whoever's in charge of the orchestra pit, the musical director, wherever you're playing says, oh no, we need that cleaner. And your amp's set to edge a breakup and you have to clean up that amp sound. Suddenly all your pedals don't work anymore. Or at least they don't sound good anymore because they're not going into an overdriven amp. So from my point of view, when I'm playing, and if I have to play some funk or some jazz or some ballads, some 80s pop, which where we want it to be really crystal clean, maybe with a compressor and some chorus and things like that, I don't want to be going into an overdriven amp. I want pedals 
that are going to work going into a clean amp. Now you could always say, why don't you switch channels in your amp before you switch on the pedal? But again, in a working environment, if I have to press more than two pedals, ideally only one pedal to change my guitar sound, I don't have time. People who write this music, they don't allow you a bar to do all your tap dancing to get your sounds right. You often finishing one section, going straight to the next section from beat four to beat one, and you have to have a completely different guitar sound. So I want an overdrive pedal where I can have my amp crystal clean if needs be, like I'm doing an 80s pop song that has crystal clean verse, and then suddenly the chorus goes heavy. I want one button that I can step on and suddenly get that sound, which is why the Angry Charlie is so useful. It's why this uh, amp tweaker Big Rock is great if you're going for a kind of a Van halen -y or super high gain sound. Um, is that super high gain? I don't know, more high gain than a Marshall JCM 800. If you read a lot of the forums with a lot of the Puritans who like, oh, we only play blues and rock and we only use edge of breakup tone and everything has to be slightly crunchy. It's just bad advice. It's bad advice if you want to be a working, versatile professional guitarist. So definitely investigate both kinds of pedals and have a listen for which is which and understand how to use them. The other thing is you might not be playing a two channel amp. You might be going into a single channel amp. And so if I wanted to set up for an edge of breakup tone, then I'd literally have to go and change the controls in order to, to clean it up if a clean song came along. And I can't be doing that in the middle of a gig. One thing you could do if you wanted to use a single channel amp is that you could get some kind of light overdrive pedal like a Klon or some kind of Klon emulation and you could set up your interactive pedals going into the Klon. So this would be set up for a light edge of breakup tone. Switch this on, then switch your interactive pedals on and then they will interact with this instead of the drive stage of your amp. That's fine. What you're looking for in this interaction is something that kind of smooths off the harsh edges of the overdrive that the Tube Screamer produces, for example. The, the, the overdrive from a Tube Screamer is quite harsh and valves or something emulating valves well will smooth that off. It'll curve off the edges of those harshly clipped waveforms. And that's why they need to be used interactively because you need something that's gonna do that smoothing further down your signal chain. Whereas independent pedals are designed for the waveform to be fine as it is, as long as it's going into a guitar amp. If you try and plug them directly into a PA or an acoustic amplifier, they'll probably still sound too harsh because the actual amplifier and the speaker cabinet does the element of tone shaping itself. So to wrap up, um, I think if you are, if you're buying a pedal or if you are looking for new pedals, I think it's really useful to think about how you're gonna use them. Are you going into an edge of breakup amp, which means you might want to look for a really good interactive pedal that will work with that guitar tone you've got and really make it bloom into something bigger and nicer? Or are you going into a clean sound? Are you going for maximum versatility? You're keeping your amp clean and then you need your pedals to do everything for you, in which case you wanna be looking for much more independent kind of pedals make sure you try them out with a clean amp in the shop and that when they switch them on, they sound fine just straight away. You can obviously always tweak the EQ controls that they've got, but a lot of pedals have quite minimal EQ controls. So you've got to make sure that you can get the sounds you want from a clean amp, from an independent pedal. And neither way is right or wrong, despite what a lot of opinion on the internet seems to say. Either is equally valid, but I think you've got to understand what you're buying to start with so that you know how you're going to use it. If you don't understand this interactive, independent two ways of using things, then you might struggle to dial in the right sound from your pedal. I hope that's useful. If you have more questions about any aspect of this, if you'd like me to go into any more detail on any of it in subsequent videos, please let me know. I'm hoping that I can find things where we look at them slightly differently to a lot of the information that's already out there on the internet that hopefully will fill in a few gaps or, or explain a few things. All the great reviewers online, they know this stuff so instinctively that they're not really explaining it when, it, when they talk about it. Fuzzies are a great example of interactive pedals. You know, they often don't sound brilliant going into, <laughs> they often sound awful going straight into 
a clean amp. The That pedal show video that I talked about demonstrates that really well with a big muff. So, so go and check that out if you want to. Fuzzes are designed to interact. The way they clip the waveform is so sharp and so harsh that our ears will hear that harshness unless they're going into an amp that is smoothing those off with its own distortion. So yeah, think about interactive or independent when you are setting up your overdrive pedals and it will definitely help you make better choices. If you want to know whether your pedal is interactive or independent, because they don't label them this way, just set your amp super clean, put the pedal on, see if it sounds harsh and fizzy, play around with it, try and dial in a good sound. If you can't get one, if it's always sounding harsh and, and biting and almost sometimes almost sounds like digital distortion, then that probably means that it's interactive. So try setting up your amp for a slightly distorted sound, a slightly overdriven sound, or putting a light overdrive pedal further down your signal chain and run the pedal into it. See if that cleans up that, that biting, harsh nature of the overdrive. And then you've discovered that it's an interactive pedal and you know how to use it. Conversely, if you can go into a clean amp and you can set it up and it can just sound great, you know, when you switch it on, that's it. You've got the sound you want straight away, switch it off, you're back to your pure clean sound, then that's an independent pedal and that's fantastic. You could then experiment with setting up your amp to a slightly overdriven sound, that edge of breakup sound, and see whether you can also dial it in to use as an interactive pedal. But to just basically find out whether it's interactive or independent, run it into a clean amp, see if you can make it sound good. So I hope that's useful, and if this has helped, then please like and subscribe and comment if there's anything I haven't explained properly or that you'd like to know more about, like me to go into more detail on, and uh, I'll do that because I just want to produce stuff that can help you all out.